There we go. Welcome, everyone. We are the Wigan by Yahuwah Fellowship Group in Yahuwah Almighty and Yahusha Messiah. Sorry about that. Um, I'm Brother Doug. This is our uh, my sister Shoshana, our sister Sally, our brother Dennis, and our brother Tobias. So we're going to be well, We are going to finally do a continuation today of last week's study. So I want to apologize for the wait for all you all that are usually watching and listening in all of our viewers here um, and our brothers and sisters. So here we go. I'm going to start us off. Scriptures that condemn such practices as telekinesis, magical practices that were promoted in those clips from the part one from last week. So for context, I would advise you to watch the part one of this study. So um, here we go. I'm going to start off with Leviticus 19.31. That's the first cross-reference we have here. I'll be putting my e-sword on the share screen just for anyone that doesn't have scriptures and wants to follow along. Follow along. So here we go, Leviticus 19.31. And I'll be reading from the Breton's English Septuagint here. It says, You shall not attend to those who have in them divining spirits, nor attach yourselves to enchanters to pollute yourselves with them. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. So, Basically, self-explanatory. You don't you don't uh, fellowship with people that have demons in them, divining spirits like spirits of divination. Okay, don't attach yourselves to enchanters. Now, enchanters is very uh, kind of general definition because you can you you know men you know wicked men will enchant and seduce women. Um, you know, you got, uh, you know, enchanters with spells even. So, I mean, enchanters can mean a lot of things that could just mean in general, stay away from enchanters, people that entice you, um, either through magic or other means. Um, and, and basically you who are here is saying, if you don't keep yourself from doing these things, you will be polluting yourselves with them. They themselves pollute themselves by doing these such things and you would be polluting yourself with them. And then, of course, Yahuwah says, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, your mighty one, your deity. So very, very key um, to take this warning here from the Father, this commandment. So um, let's see, I think uh, I'll be continuing also here with Revelations chapter 21, verse 8. So let me go back on the shared screen. I'm going to have to do this every time, unfortunately, with the Esau. Uh, let's see here, Revelations 21, verse 8, okay, which says, But the fearful, the unbelieving, or you could even say the untrustworthy, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So all these are key to uh, take in here especially for this specific study, especially sorcerers, as you can see here. So again, sorcery, white magic, black magic in the father's eyes, it doesn't matter. It's evil in the father's eyes, white or black, black magic, it doesn't matter how you use it, it's an abomination to him. So, um, and these, these are things that are showing you, people that practice these such things are going straight into the lake of fire, including whoremongers, uh, murderers, those that are doubting and not believing, um, you know, and the abominable. I would think the abominable would also have to do, you know, with Leviticus chapter 11. You know, you become an abomination if you're eating things that are abominable. So, you it know. It says also, Doug, that a man who lies with a man is with a woman as an abomination. Yes, that's true too. Yeah, so you have... Um, sodomy is considered an abomination, uh, and uh, touching something that's unclean is an abomination. Eating something that's unclean, so it could just be in general. It's putting all that together could be uh, actually that's why they why it just says the abominable anything that would be an abomination to the Father. So yeah, so that was Revelations twenty one verse eight. Thank you, Sister Shoshana, for pointing that out. That's something I missed there about uh, the man with a man thing. 
Okay, so now let's see the last one I have before Brother Tobiah is going to read. I have Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. Okay, so I'm going to be going there next. Okay, Leviticus 20, verse 6. Here we go. So we got, And the being that turns after such as has familiar spirits and after wizards to go a-whoring after them, I will even set my face against that being and will cut him off from among his people. I like how the King James actually says wizards. Kind of has, it kind of modernizes it. Okay, so yeah. So wizards, enchanters, diviners, we're not supposed to be going after them. Um, and uh, it even shows that if you have fellowship with such people, you are actually whoring. You're going a whoring. It's a type of whoring after them you're you're uh go, you're whoring away from your alahim so that's very important to see the connection there um and it's very important here the last part of it sounds pretty serious you who is going to set his face against you i think doug you might want to read verse four because that okay. leads into what verse five says okay yeah sure let's see here and verse even four. verse three Verse 3, okay. Um, and I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he has given of his seed unto Molech to defile my set-apart place and to profane my set-apart name. And if the people of the land do anyways hide their eyes from the man when he gives of his seed unto Molech. Now, just to explain, because people might be looking at that terminology, like give of his seed to Molech. Th this is talking about passing through your children to the fire. Back in those days, they would sacrifice to this idol, this graven image named Molech, which goes back to Baal. Um, and they would actually burn their children physically in a fire, in a sacrifice to Molech. And so this is what Yahu is talking about. And he's saying that anyone that does such things should be put to death. So, um, and... There's another idol today. Yeah, today it's more subtle the way this happens. Um, this has turned into what we know as abortion. And what happens is that usually when someone gets an abortion, usually they rationalize either they do it for their career, they're going to college. When a woman gets a abortion, uh, abortion, usually if you have something above the father's will, which the father's will is for you to keep that baby. So in the most uh, literal sense you your career has become your idol or you planned are, parenthood is your yeah, idol yeah planned parenthood uh you know the fact that you you are saying your body your choice you are worshiping yourself by doing that instead of doing the father's will which is for that baby to be alive and uh for you to take care of it you know um, yeah, go ahead, brother Tobiah. Oh, well, they still, they still literally do that. I mean, Molech requires your own offspring. You can't just have people uh, kill their own children. And he, Molech literally requires your own offspring to be burned alive in the fire. That's what they do in Bohemian Grove. That's what the leadership of the nation are required to do. They're required to give of their own offspring. So. Um, these people will, will kidnap and keep a woman separate or hidden away and just so that she can bear the child of someone and they can take their own offspring because Moloch requires your own offspring, your own seed to be given. to Now, what's going on with the abortions and stuff has to do with uh, slaughtering unto Asherah or whatever, but uh, of any children, all, you know, in general. But mm. Moloch specifically requires your own offspring. Well, abortion is definitely your own offspring. Yeah, yeah. The uh, but, woman Molech is definitely though, like Brother Tobias said, it's more or less you're giving it directly to Satan, which the Bohemian Grove does. <laughs> a lot of a lot of the uh, elite people in this world do. They do. They still practice this stuff. Uh, which Yahuwah says is, a, is an abomination to him. Other places in scripture, Yahuwah even says, you know, I never had it in my mind for the children of Yashar Al to do such things. Um, so, it, 
they uh, nowadays they kind of try to hide it, and you know, unless unless you have a camera and go to Bohemian Grove, we wouldn't even know about such things happening today. So they try to they try to do it secretly. Uh, but yeah, brother Tobiah, thank you for bringing that up. That's very important to let them know about that. Um, so it says, and if the people of the land do anywise hide their eyes from the man when he is given of his seed unto Molech and kill him not, meaning that you try to show mercy to someone that passes their own child through the fire to Molech, then I will set my face against that man and against his family. I will cut him off, meaning he's going to kill his whole family. And all of that go whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. So this is a very strict warning, a uh, commandment and warning not to do such things. And the next verse. Yep. And the next verse uh, is about, this is about occult practices and stuff like here. The being which turns after such has a familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that being and will cut off him off from among his people. So again, another warning, another commandment, do not go after people with divining spirits, with familiar spirits, with demons, after wizards. Basically, a wizard in modern day is someone that is a Wiccan, a practitioner. Okay, Don't, don't go after people like that. Don't be fellowshipping with people that do that stuff. Stay away from them. You know, um, you know, they, they have familiar spirits in them because they're, they're, you know, they're actually invoking spirits when they're in that pentagram and they're, they're doing these weird magical spells. They're actually invoking demons to so stay away from them. Um, yeah. So that was Leviticus 20 verse six. And, uh, let's see here. I think brother Tobiah is next. He'll be reading. Uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. So I'll let Brother Tobiah read and I'll be muting myself. Okay. Okay, Isaiah 8, 19. Um, and when, you, when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their Elohim? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? Wow, we see Saul, Saul did this uh, in pursuing for uh, to speak to uh, Samuel. He, he sought a, a medium to uh, to inquire of the dead. Exactly yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And this kind of reminds me what Yahushua says, and uh, I think this might have been quoted by Yahushua in the New Testament. I'm starting to think. Uh, where he talks about, uh, isn't he not the uh, Elohim of the living and not the dead? And so I think Yahushua might actually, might have quoted this in the New Testament. I would have to look for the New Testament version of this, but I think he he takes a little bit of this verse and um, tells tells the apostles and the Pharisees to warn them about that. Um, and there, even when Yahushua's ascension, or not, not his ascension, my bad, his rising from the dead, they go to the tomb. And it's kind of similar to this where, they, where the angel says to the women, I think the, the two Marys, it says, um, why do you seek the living among the dead? It's kind of like a similar aspect um, that I kind of got from this. But basically this is in context talking about they're worshiping, they're trying to worship Yahuwah, but but in, in, in the way the pagans would worship the dead. So like when they say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their Elohim, their Elohim for the living to the dead, basically meaning shouldn't you be seeking the true mighty one, Yahuwah, rather than worshiping the dead, seeking the dead. So that, that's what this is talking about. And this is practiced a lot by um, Catholicism. Catholicism is big on uh, veneration of the saints, the dead, dead saints and all that. So there's a lot of religions that actually practice this, um, that worship the dead. Um, Halloween, mm -hmm. you know, right there in Isaiah 8, 19 is warning you about Halloween. Um, so, 
anyway, I don't want to, you know, beat a dead horse there, but thank you, brother Tobiah, for uh, reading Isaiah eight nineteen. Let's see where are we at the study so far. We are down to, okay, I'm back on. All right. Exodus 22, 18. All right, here we go. So Exodus 22, 18, I will be reading. Here we go. And Exodus 22:18. I think I'll do the Bretons this time. Let's see here. You shall not save the lives of sorcerers. Another warning. Okay, if you, uh, you know, if you see someone practicing witchcraft, you are to put them to death. Literally. So you're not, and I think uh, the King James here would say, do not allow a witch to live. Do not suffer a witch to live. Uh, suffer in the old British English actually means allow. Just to, I know some people have trouble with the, I'm having trouble with English. I know, I know some people have trouble with, with the old British English. So that's what that means. Do not suffer a witch to live means do not allow a witch or a sorcerer to live. So that was um, Exodus 22, 18, pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, you know, in modern day today, unfortunately, our culture thinks it's evil for us to keep a commandment like that. They would look at us like, oh, you're, you're bigots and you're hateful people to want to kill an innocent witch. You know, you know, that's, that's the way this wicked world thinks. Um, back in the days, mind you, just for any Christians that might be listening in, back in the day, way back in like the 20s, 30s, Christians would be having witch trials, okay? They would be killing witches. So even Christians back in the day had some form of Torah observance in certain aspects. They actually understood stuff in the Old Testament was not done away with, like, killing witches so just something to think about so revelations 22 15 um let's see revelations 22:15. for without our dogs sorcerers again mentioning sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loves and makes a lie. So loves falsehood, loves, uh, you know, basically the opposite of the truth. Anyone that loves wickedness, anyone that's, you know, lo loves lawlessness, you could say. Lawlessness is falsehood. So um, idolaters, you know, anything in your life can become an idol. A material possession can even become an idol if, if, you, if you're not able to part with it for Yahushua's sake. Um, you know, if you're not able to let it go. Okay, so uh, let me see here. So uh, dogs. Dogs could be considered wicked people that, you know, are they love their sin. You know, when the scripture talks about, you know, a dog returning to its own vomit. You know, when it's talking about dogs, it's not talking about literal animals like dogs. It's talking about, you know, people that, you know, just love their sin, love to return to their own vomit. You know, that, that's what it means by that. Um, sorcerers, you know, self-explanatory. Um, murderers, you know, genocide, people that kill people for no reason, you know, murderers. So um, that's Revelations twenty two fifteen. So all of these people will be in uh, all people that practice such things that willfully practice such things will not be in uh, the kingdom. It's saying in Revelations twenty two fifteen they are not allowed into the New Jerusalem. Um, so let's see here. We got uh, see the next one here is Brother Dennis. He's got uh, 2 Kings 21, verse 6. And I'll mute myself and let him go. He's still muted. Dennis, you're still muted. Okay, there we go. Okay, 2 Kings 21, verse 6.
All right. There's, uh, and he made his son pass through the fire and practice magic and use divination and consulted spiritists and mediums. He did much evil in the eyes of Yahuwah to provoke Yahuwah. Yep. And to anger. Yeah. Yeah. The, the uh, King James has provoked him to anger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, let's see here if, if that's just something with the King James. No, the Septuagint has it too. Okay. Yeah. To provoke him to anger, he caused his sons to pass through the fire, use divination and auspices. I guess that's some type of magic there and made groves. Interesting. The uh, Septuagint has a groves there. Multiplied wizards as to do that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah to provoke him to anger. And this is a guy that was supposed to be king over Yahuwah's people, if I'm not mistaken. This is Manasseh. Yeah. This is a guy named Manasseh. Manasseh. Yeah, Manasseh. I mean, yeah, Manasseh. Yeah. So Manasseh, he was the king of Yehuda, and he became very wicked. Um, supposedly there's a prayer of Manasseh, which is after all this happened. The prayer of Manasseh shows him repenting is an extra biblical book we would consider today. Um, so it's kind of interesting that it seems like Yahuwah's own people were becoming more wicked than even the pagans at that point. And that's something that's continued to modern day today, you know, divination, like, uh, Bringing up the dead, you go to uh, tarot card readers. That would be divination. I mean, it's more subtle today than it was back then. Back then, you know, they were just, you know, you know, outright on purpose doing this stuff. But now today, Satan's been a little bit more deceptive, and he's gotten people to practice it without uh, trying to make it attractive to people, like we said in the part one. Um, so, you know, tarot card readings forbidden by our father should not be doing that. You should not be bringing up the dead like King Shaul did, like brother Tobias said. Um, so all these are considered like divination magic is completely abomination to the father, um, completely abomination to Yahuwah. And so, yeah, so we gotta we gotta guard this stuff. This this is very important stuff to stay away from. But yeah, thank you, brother Dennis, for reading Second Kings chapter twenty one verse six. Um, brother Tobiah, uh, yep, go ahead, okay. sis. Would you mind printing Dennis's name under his under his his um camera? It just says. At, Says Samsung. <laughs> and you are muted, Doug. You're muted. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I couldn't do both at once. I was trying to type his name in, so I couldn't really unmute okay. myself. Yeah, that way people will know he's Dennis. Call me Sam. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Brother Tobiah, if you could read um, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. Let's see. Okay, 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of divination, and stubbornness is as wicked, wickedness and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of Yahuwah, he also does reject you as sovereign. So he's talking to the same man that went and sought the medium to uh, call upon the, the spirit of uh, Shemuel there. Uh, show. Mm -hmm. It says, and what's interesting too is that we that have the Brit Hadashah now know who the word of Yahuwah is. So you could even take it to mean that uh, he has rejected the son, the, the son. Messiah. You have rejected the word of Yahuwah. Yahuwah also shall reject you for being king over Yasharal. So in my opinion, it's not just literal utterances. It's even talking about the son. By rejecting his commandments, he reject the son. Because the son is the commandments made flesh. So um, it's very interesting there that uh, 
that that even ties into Revelations, where it says his name is the word of Yahuwah. So uh, it's very interesting, the twofold there with rejecting his Torah, you're rejecting the sons, one and the same. Um, so, yeah, th this is very um, serious. You know, King Shaul, he got mad. He got jealous over King David. Um, you know, he had a divining. He actually had a familiar spirit in him because of Yahuwah. Yahuwah saw King Shaul's heart and started getting proud and stuff, and he sent a demon uh, to Shaul. And the only way King Shaul was separated from the de demon was King David playing the harp. That actually, we don't even realize it as humans, but music has a power, uh, you know, music is very powerful. You know, it can, it can be used for Yahuwah, you know, for two when we're using it to worship Yahuwah, the right type of music. Uh, and music can also be used evilly by Satan, as we've seen in this world. Um, so, um, but, but just instruments that the Father intended us for us to use to worship him, you know, has power like that, the frequency in it to get the demon away from him. So when it's tuned right. Yeah. The, this world has changed the natural tuning of instruments. Mm -hmm. And uh, no. I think the normal tuning, the, the tuning that we had before is the tuning that uh, goes right in with the DNA of our bodies and uh, the frequencies around us and men have changed that to make it discordant with those frequencies and our DNA mm -hmm. yeah. yeah they go I think 432 to 440 um, that is the key of A, the, yeah. um, actually the, um, note A should be at 432 megahertz, not at 400 or 440, whatever. I think it was 440 that the world put it to. Yeah, it's hertz. Hertz, yeah, not megahertz. That's interesting, 440, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I wonder if that's on purpose because the whole 44 thing with the Illuminati, they like to use 44. So I wonder if that was on purpose. I wonder uh -huh. if that's, that, that seems very interesting that they would change it to, what was it, 430 to 440? That's, that's kind of interesting. Uh, but anyway. 432 to 440. That's okay. they changed it. Okay. It should be 432. Okay. So, yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. And I need to retune my guitar again. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Dennis has a frequency generator that can help you tune, tune your instrument to and properly. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to speak a little about that, Dennis. Well, you know, people might be interested. You can, uh, uh, it's like uh, the watchmakers that tune their uh, watches to WWV. Uh, you, whatever frequency you want, you can dial that frequency up, and you just you heterodyne your frequency a bit until they are uh, synchronous. That's how you do that. Mm. You're over most people's heads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's back to, uh, let's see, back to our study here. Um, Brother Tobiah, if you could continue and read um, 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 3 to 7. Um, have a little note here that says, Star Wars has a moon named after Endor in Return of the Jedi, which was the third movie of the original trilogy back in the 70s. Um, so I'm going to let Brother Tobiah read 1 Samuel 28, 3-7, and I'll mute myself. Yeah, Brother, um, 1 Samuel 28, verses 3-7. through 
And Samuel had died, and all of Yisrael had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, in his own city. And Shoal had put away the spiritists from the land, mediums. And the Philistines were gathered and came and encamped at Shinyan. And Shoal gathered all of Yisrael, and they encamped at Gilboa. And when Shoal saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And Shaul inquired of Yahuwah, but Yahuwah did not answer him, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, or by the prophets. Shaul then said to his servants, find me a woman who is a medium, and go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, look, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. So here we see Shaul doing exactly what our father's Torah says, don't do. And um, he sought after, you know, he sought after, saw our father, for our father first, but he, he, he turned and sought the medium. So, man, learn from his mistake. Yeah. And he, uh, when, once Yahuwah wasn't answering him anymore, uh, he, uh, he wanted, instead of repenting, he wanted the easy way out, which sometimes us as humans do, unfortunately. Instead of uh, riding the storm, he, uh, he just went to, he went to seek mediums, someone with a divining spirit, a witch. And uh, yeah, I, kind of find it, find, I kind of find it interesting that Star Wars uses that word Endor as like a planet. It's kind of interesting. They call, uh, so that's kind of interesting there. They put a little truth in plain sight there um, in that. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. We go went, back to the medium. You went to see the medium at night, too. Hmm. Uh, seeking, seeking the light of Yahuwah, you don't do that at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, usually at night is where bad things tend to happen. The later we're up, usually uh, <laughs> the more access to things that we shouldn't be doing. So, yeah, I now, agree. Now you see TV had a video about doing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the midnight ride. Yeah. Let's see uh, here, Leviticus 20, 27, I'll be reading next. So let's see, we're going to be moving on here. Yeah, Leviticus 20, 27. And here we go. Let me go there real quick. Leviticus 20, 27. And... And as for a man or a woman, whosoever of them shall have in them a divining spirit, or be an enchanter, let them both die the death. You shall stone them with stones. They are guilty. Again, this is another time. You who is reiterating this. <laughs> whenever you, whenever I notice the same commandment being reiterated two or three different times in the Torah, you should pay close attention to it. <laughs> That's usually like uh, you who is reiterating it for a reason. Um, so, yep. So here we go. Uh, so divining spirit, self-explanatory, you know, uh, a familiar spirit, a demonic spirit, uh, a spirit of divination, enchanter, like I said before, enchanter is a general type of word. It, it could mean, uh, multiple applications. Um, so says, let them die the death. You shall stone them with stones. They are guilty. So there's no mercy to be shown for people that are doing such occult practices. Okay, so yeah, let's see here. Sister Sally, if you could possibly read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. Um, I think you're muted. Let's see here. Okay. There you go. Verse, uh, verse 9 of chapter 18 of Deuteronomy. When you come into the land which Yahuwah your Elohim is giving you, 
do not learn to do according to the abominations of those Gentiles. Let no one be found among you who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices divination, or a user of magic, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For whoever does these are an abomination to Yahuwah, and because of these abominations, Yahuwah your Elohim drives them out from before you. Be perfect before Yahuwah your Elohim, for these nations whom you are possessing do listen to those using magic and, and to diviners. But as for you, Yahuwah your Elohim has not appointed such for you. And the next verse I have to, to read is Revelation 18, verse 23. Hold on, hold on, sis. Um, we're gonna, we're just going in a certain order here. Um, actually, uh, Tobiah is next. Um, he has to read First Chronicles ten thirteen to fourteen. Um, your re your your Revelations one is um a couple later, so I'll I'll let you know when you have sure. to read that one. No problem, though. Um, Brother Tobiah, um, First Chronicles chapter ten verses thirteen to fourteen. Okay, First Chronicles 10, verse 13 and 14. Thus Shaul died for his trespass, which he had trespassed against Yahuwah, because he did not guard the word of Yahuwah, and also for asking a medium for to make inquiry, and did not inquire of Yahuwah, so he put him to death and turned the reign over to David, son of Yeshi. Now, it's interesting here, it says that he did not inquire of Yahuwah. Uh, the rest of that those verses I, I gather and I see straight, but from what I'm seeing, maybe I misunderstand or the translation is off. Um, he did seek to inquire of you, but, but didn't get a reply. So then he went to the medium, which he should not have went to the medium. But here it makes note that he went to the medium and didn't inquire of you. So I don't know if anybody's got the insight into that. But. Yeah, that could be a contradiction based on the manuscripts that we have. Uh, that could just be a mess up with the translator or with the manuscript. I'm seeing both Masoretic text and uh, and Septuagint saying that. So uh, I'll definitely look more into that. That's a good topic to look into, stuff like that. Uh, seems to be a contradiction. You're right about that. Um, let me see if I can find that verse that we read from earlier real quick from, was it chapter 23 of 1 Samuel, that it said that he inquired, uh, I think it was, uh, oh no, maybe it was, I think it might have been 1 Kings, uh, first, I think it was 1 Samuel 23. First Samuel, yeah, yeah, it was 1 Samuel uh, 15, 23. Yeah, 15. All right, so let's let's figure this out, why that would be that. Um, unless we're misunderstanding that verse. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. It's earlier in the chapter, I think, is where uh, the question of did he uh, call upon Yahuwah first or ask Yahuwah about the matter first? Let me see here. Uh, Let's see here. Samuel rose early and went in the morning to meet K. Carmel. He came to, uh, said to him, Shaul, Baruch, are you to you who established Shaul? Okay. Okay. Shaul said, From out of uh, Amalek, I brought them. Okay. And excellent flocks and the herds so that it may be sacrificed to you. Okay. In this chapter, his initial sin is that he takes what's under the band. And sacrifices it to Yahuwah, and this is where Samuel rebukes him. Okay, so this is like a different thing. Okay, um, but this is what starts off his uh, plunge, his wickedness. We had just read a uh, yeah. part where it said he tried to seek Yahuwah and got no answer. Yeah. And that's when he went to this uh, medium. Yeah, let me see. Let me try to find that. Oh, 28, chapter 28. My bad. Okay. Yeah, that's it's First Samuel twenty eight three to seven. That's what Brother Tobiah read before. That seems to be the contradiction mm -hmm. with First Chronicles. Um, so let's see here. 
uh, starts off here by saying, and Samuel died and lamented him, all Yashrael and they in, entombed him in Ramon, his city, and Shaul removed the ones who delivered oracles and diviners. So he does the right thing first. And together the Philistines and camp, camp in Shunem, and Shaul gathers together every man of Yashrael and they camp in Gilboa, and Shaul beheld the camp of the Philistines, and he was fearful, and it star, star, startled his heart exceedingly. And Shaul asked through Yahuwah, yeah, it says it right there. Even in the Septuagint, it says right there. It's Kurios right there. Asked through Yahuwah. Did not answer to, Yahuwah did not answer him in dreams, nor in the manifestations, nor among the prophets. The only thing I can think of is that Yahuwah is not answering him at that point because of what he did beforehand in First Samuel. He's waiting for Samuel to repent. I mean, yeah. Samuel's waiting. <laughs> Yeah, who is waiting for Shaul to repent? Sorry, yeah, I, don't, I don't think Shaul <laughs> repented from the um the um the under the ban. The uh, well, he he never repented from that. I don't think. Not only that, he he's in fear of them and or their mighty ones, as the father says, "Do not fear them or their mighty ones." I hate you say weird. Oh wow. So it could just be, uh, yeah, so basically I guess he was seeking Yahuwah, but not wholeheartedly. He was in fear of their mighty ones, so he was kind of like lukewarm, and, and he wasn't earnestly really seeking Yahuwah and trusting in Yahuwah, so his distrust, his disbelief, um, I guess maybe Yahuwah did not count it as him really seeking him. So these things separate us from Yahuwah. Yeah, so... So I guess that's what would reconcile First Chronicles, I'm guessing, maybe. That's he, what would. He was yeah. bad at thinking this man was what you, Yahuwah gave him. And, well, I'll do one thing. I'll do this, too, when he wasn't told to do so. Yeah. Yeah, that, that he wanted to sacrifice rather than obey. And that, that started his uh, trip down there, and then he, he – uh, now he was fearful of the Philistines and their mighty ones, so that was strike two. And and Yahuwah seems like Yahuwah kind of, since Shaul beforehand turned his ear to the Torah, you know, that's another thing too is, you know, when he did that, taking what's under the ban, knowing well he was commanded not to take what's under the ban, sacrifice to Yahuwah, did it anyway. That's like turning our ears to the Torah in Proverbs 28.9. Um, Anything that's put under the ban means to be utterly destroyed. Yep. Utterly the ban means you don't save it. You don't it's to be utterly destroyed and killed. So he took some of the um, cattle and whatever was supposed to be under the ban, and he tried to use it as a sacrifice, uh, uh, a offering to the Father. And Yahuwah did not honor it because it was disobedience. And it seems like that was the starting point. And at this point in First Samuel 28, he does something else that's wrong, and he's fearful of the Philistines and their mighty ones, and he doesn't trust fully in Yahuwah. He doesn't earnestly seek him, and maybe uh, that's what I'm collecting. Maybe that's why First Chronicles says he did not seek him, um, is that he didn't truly seek him. He, you know, kind of half <laughs> A-S-S-E-D did, you know. He kind of, First know. Samuel 28, 9 says, but, but the woman said to him, Look, you know what Shaul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the spiritists from the land. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to put me to death? So she knew also that he was going to put uh, the mediums and spiritists to death under the ban, so forth and so on. And so, yeah, you're right. He, he, he violated that instruction in, in seeking and then going before her. And then he just promised her, promises her. He swore by Yahuwah, verse 10. Saul swore by Yahuwah saying, as Yahuwah lives, no punishment comes upon you for this matter. So he just totally um, rejected the, the instructions of Yahuwah to, to, to put them under the ban. And, mm -hmm. um, but, but, you know, and, and used Yahuwah's name in, in, his, uh, in his violation of instructions and whatnot. So, but, mm -hmm. so I see he put his trust, ultimately he's putting his trust in seeking um, the dead and seeking mediums to counsel from from the dead instead mm -hmm. of instead of waiting waiting on Yahuwah. Yeah, and 
truly repenting, truly uh, saying, I messed up, Father. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have disobeyed you when you told me to keep that stuff under the ban. I shouldn't have sacrificed those animals that were on the, under the ban. Um, and if he would have done that, I think Yahuwah would have Yahuwah would have turned to him if he saw true repentance, I think. I think but it was he the heart. He turned from his way because here he, he should have put her under the ban, and he's still failing to put things under the ban that are under the ban. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally the opposite. It wasn't just like it sat in limbo without any, you know, further wrong. It, it progressed into even multiple um, transgressions. Yeah. 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 It snow piled. Yeah. It, it kept adding on, adding on, adding on. So yeah, that's that's an important warning to us all. Uh, be careful of our pride. Be careful of fear of men. That's the wrong type of fear there. Okay, fear of men. You know, maybe the fear of the giants there because the Philistines. Goliath is a Philistine, so you know he might have been he might have had the same type of fear that they had in the wilderness, the generations before him, of Caleb and all that in Numbers fifteen. So. He could have had that same type of fear, too, with them and their mighty ones that are realizing, oh, they're stronger than us, you know, and so and stuff like that. But, yeah, um, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 26, I'll be reading here, which uh, this is another one here in Leviticus, warns us about these practices here. Um, Eat not upon the mounds, and you shall not foretell nor use augury. So fortune telling. Okay. Uh, using augury is an old term for, uh, let me see if I can find a better translation for that word augury. Enchantment. Um, a, an observer of times. Now this is probably talking about astrology. Um, and all that thing. So, you know, enchantment, that's pretty common. Eat anything with blood. I like how the Masoretic has eat anything with blood. So that, that gives a more literal understanding there. So do not eat anything with blood in it. According to Torah, where, you know, when you eat an animal and you slaughter it the right way to Yahuwah, you're also supposed to let the blood pour out onto the ground. You're not supposed to eat anything with blood or eat blood itself. There's a lot of occult practices. I don't think we touched on it in the part one, but there's also occult practices with drinking the blood that they do. Um, that's why you see in the Harry Potter movies that the bad guy would drink unicorn blood and all of that. So this, this is all stuff that in reality is what these pagans would do. The Wiccans would do. They still do. Um, so this is a, a warning against eating anything with blood and using enchantment or being an observer of times, which probably more or less deals with the Zodiac, you know, astrology, I would think. Um, so anyway, so that was Leviticus chapter 19, verse 26. Uh, okay, let's see here. We got um, Brother Dennis is next with Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. Okay, Galatians 5, 19 through 21. And the works of the flesh are well known, which are these, adultery, whoring, uncleanness, indecency, adultery, idol, idolatry, drug sorcery, hatred, quarrels, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, murders, drunkenness, wild parties, and the like, of which I forewarn you, even as I also said before, that those who practice such as these shall not inherit the reign of Yahuwah. Very, very, very scary couple of verses there, especially uh, when I first read this. I remember the first time I ever read this verse. Oh, man, I was scared for my life because I was a drunkard in my past. I read this, man. I threw away hard liquor as quick as anyone could when I saw that verse. Man. Wild parties, drunkenness, revilings, you know, that that's a lot of stuff. My generation, this uh, millennial or uh, 90s babies, you could call us, uh, oof, man, 
that 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 is a big problem with my generation um drunkenness and parties i can tell you right now Whew, man so this is a warning um this kind of goes off into other topics of things that are going to keep you out of the kingdom but it's important that we read this um these couple of verses here that brother dennis read this for us okay um depending on the translation in verse 20 it will say hatred which Yahushua kind of warns us about hatred in a bad way. There's a type of hatred we shouldn't have for a brother or a sister without cause, to be angry with them without cause. Um, you know, to be malicious towards someone, that's probably what it means by hatred there. Um, so, again, so this, this is very important um, that we have read this. And it does talk about sorcery. Um, jealousy, we got to be careful of jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions. You know, we got to be careful not to be um, gossiping that would cause divisions and stuff like that and turning a brother against a sister. We got to be careful of that. Um, all these things are going to keep us out of the kingdom. So it's very important we, we uh, definitely meditate on stuff like this. It's very important. The works. So these are all the works of the flesh. This is Paul warning us about this stuff. Um, and like it says, it says orgies in certain ver certain versions, modern versions of verse 21. It will say orgies, uh, drunkenness, envy. Um, and he, like, like I said before, it says those that practice, practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of Yahuwah, the kingdom of Elohim, Elohim. So very important that uh, we adhere to that warning. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Because it can turn into bitterness. Mm -hmm. The one to hate someone, not to give them. Give them yeah. Bitterness. Yeah. The bitterness and destroy them. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and unforgiveness is not going to harm the person that that you you have a problem with it's just going to be like a monkey on your back that's it, it it's going to be it's going to be it's hurting you like forgiveness is for us just like forgiveness is for Yahuwah when he talks about you know for my own sake i'm going to blot out your sins uh, i will blot out your sins in that day mind you he says in that day so you know we should kind of keep the fear of Yahuwah in us for multiple reasons, because the, our sins have not been blotted out yet. He says, in that day, mm -hmm. I, I will blot out your sins. So that that's something to keep in mind, too, is the fear of Yahuwah. Um, but, yeah. Um, so let's see here. Sister Shushana is next with um, Acts chapter 19, verses 17 to 20. Okay, hold on. Yep. Acts 19, 17 to okay. 20. Acts 19, 17 to 20. The scriptures version. And this became known to all, both Yahudim and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the master Yahusha was made great. And many who had believed came confessing and declaring their deeds. And many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together, burning them before all. And they reckoned up the value of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the master was growing mightily and prevailing. I really like uh, how the uh, ESV does this version. Um, I just noticed that it's a little different than the ISR here. It says, uh, instead of just confessing in verse 18, it says divulging their practices. So getting rid of their practices. Mm -hmm. And a number of those who had practiced magical arts or magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted the value of them and found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver. So this stuff was worth a lot of money, according to the pagans, according to the Wiccans, I guess. they According uh, to the world. 
yeah, the world would uh, find value in such garbage, I guess. Just like uh, Satan's music is worth who knows countless billions of dollars to them. But Yahoo's music, they don't want to touch it. I'm just noticing here I like about this translation too is for Acts 19:18 they're giving me some footnotes here in the ESV it says Matthew 3:6 Mark 1:5 and uh, Romans 14:11 and the book of Yaakov which commonly is called the book of James chapter 5 verse 16 so I think I'll go there real quick with those cross references let's see here Matthew 3:6 and they were immersed by him in the river Jordan, uh, Jordan, confessing their sins. Okay, so that's like a generic cross-reference there. Okay, that's more or less just talking about confessing their transgressions. Okay, Mark 1.5 is another one that the ESV cited. And all the country of Yehuda and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being immersed by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. So this is showing the context of confessing your sins is more than just acknowledging them. You're, uh, you're stricken in the heart. You're forsaking them. Um, I think that's what the, the For reason. Forsaking is probably the better translation. Yeah. Um, for it is written, Romans 14, 11 is one of the last ones I have here from that footnote. For it is written, as I live, says Yahuwah, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to Elohim or to Elohim. So this this is another one that's kind of a loose one, but it's talking about, it's showing you the context of confessing, what confessing fully means. Um, you know, it's not just acknowledging, it's an action. It's, it's, it's an actual action. You're giving up your former way of life. You know, uh, you know, you're giving up, you're confessing it, you're getting rid of it. Um, so, and then the last one here is Yaakov, James chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be made whole. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is. So again, the confessing your sins to brothers and sisters you are forsaking them by acknowledging them. It's like connected. It's uh, that's. I think that's why they use that as the footnote there. All those those four cross references. So um, after we're done today, I'm probably going to add them to this study because it's good for anyone that wants this document can test it for themselves. Um, so, but yep. So that was. Acts 19, 17 to 20, that Shushana just read, I will be reading Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19 here. Here we go. And i um, sorry for the rabbit trail, guys, but I thought those verses fitted this study. Uh, let's see here. Deuteronomy 4, 19. And it says, and beware lest you raise your eyes to heaven. Sorry about that. Stupid phone. Uh, and beware lest you raise your eyes to heaven, and when you see the sun and moon and the stars and all the army of heaven, you be drawn away and bow down to them and serve them. Things that Yahuwah, your Elohim, has allotted to all the peoples under the heaven. But, next verse here, but Yahuwah has taken you and brought you out of the land of the iron furnace out of Egypt to be a people of his own inheritance as you are this day. Basically what he's saying here, yeah, he gave the, the armies of heaven for the Gentiles to worship, the heathen to worship, but not you. You are to be worshiping Yahuwah, not, not the army of heaven, not the sun, moon. So that's very important. Uh, a commandment here to understand that uh, basically Yahuwah is warning them about this. Do not, do not be in awe with the signs of the heaven. You know, Jeremiah 10 is another one. So anyway, so let's see here. I got also Isaiah chapter 19, verse three. 
see here. Isaiah 19, verse 3 it says, And the spirit of the Egyptians within them will be emptied out, and I will confound their counsel. And they will inquire of the idols and the sorcerers and the mediums and the necromancers. And then it goes on to say, I will give over the Egyptians into a hand of a hard master, meaning, you know, a afflicting king, basically. And a fierce king will rule over them, declares Yahuwah Elohim of armies. So this is a very important verse there showing them, showing that this is what happens to people that have a divining spirit and they inquire of graven images, demons, and their source, they inquire of sorcerers and mediums. He's going to hand them over to someone that will afflict them. So that's very important to see there. Um, that was Isaiah 19, 3 to 4. And let's see here, let me go back to the document here and see who's next. I think Sister Sally is next. Um, Sister, Sister Sally, if you could read Revelations 18, verse 23. Yeah. You got me unmuted? Yeah. Okay. In the light of a verse 23. And the light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more at all. And the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more at all. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth. For by your drug sorcery, all the nations were led astray. Wow. Thank you, Sister Sally. I really like how the ESV puts a little note here. Huh. Nahum 3.4, because I think Nahum is actually talking about the same person. It's talking about, so now I it, put roses in your hair. Thank you so much. Here, where's Nahum? Nahum, Nahum 3.4. Thank you. All the, and all for the countless whorings of the prostitute, Revelation 17, 2, Revelation 18, 3. Uh, graceful and of deadly charms, I guess for her, that's fitting grace. <laughs> Who betrays nations with her whorings and peoples of her charms. So this is talking about the drug sorcery, pharmacia, what we know as the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, but what I like about the ESV is they give you a little note here. Back to Nahum three four is where it, uh, where uh, John is most likely quoting from, and also um, Isaiah forty seven verse nine and Isaiah forty seven verse twelve. We'll probably get there later in the study, but those are the little footnotes they have there. So let me just get to okay. So I'm going to be reading next Isaiah chapter two verse six. Okay, so Isaiah chapter two verse six. Here we go. Isaiah 2.6. Okay, here we go. Let's see here it says, For you have rejected your people, the house of Yashar all, because they are full of things from the east and, and of the fortune tellers like the Philistines, and they strike hands with the children of foreigners. So let's see. Yahuwah is rejecting his people here, um, and it's giving you the reason why. Because he's rejected his people because they are inquiring of fortune tellers, as the Philistines are. So the Philistines are fortune tellers, and they strike hands with the children of foreigners. So that's showing that Yahuwah is going to forsake his people if they're acting wickedly and doing the practices of the other nations. So, yeah. And, wow, the Septuagint is a lot different for this one. Many strange women, children were born. See, this more gives you the idea that they're actually mixing with pagans. They're being unequally yoked. I kind of like how the Septuagint words this, for he has forsaken his people, the house of Yashar'al, 
because their land is filled as at the beginning with divinations as the land of the Philistines, and many strange children were born to them. Okay, so this gives you more of an idea of what's happening. They were mixing with the Philistines, possibly. They were intermarrying with pagans, with un, um, people that were not in covenant with the Father. So they had strange children born to them. So that's why Yahuwah has forsaken them. And so that was Isaiah chapter 2, verse 6. And uh, I'm also going to be reading here Isaiah 44, verse 25 here. So I'll be going to there next. Let's see here, Isaiah 44, 25. Isaiah 44, 25 here. Who else will frustrate the tokens of those that have divining spirits and prophecies from the heart of man, turning the wise back and making their counsel foolishness? <laughs> so Yahuwah will frustrate um, the thoughts of those that have divining spirits and the prophecies of the heart of man, turning the wise back, meaning turning those that have wisdom back to his ways. And their counsel, so he makes the counsels of the wicked foolish. Again, it talks about the wisdom of this world is foolishness to Yahuwah. So and that's another reason to stay away from these practices, because then you become enmity with the Father. And then you're, at, you're enemies with the Creator, the Almighty, and His Son, Yahushua. So just, just something to think about here. So that's Isaiah 44, verse 25. Let's see here. Okay, I'm hearing like weird background noise going on here, but almost everyone's muted. That's weird. Uh, okay, um, Brother Dennis, can you read um, Exodus chapter 8, verse 7? There you go. Okay. <clears throat> And the magicians did so with their magic and brought up frogs on the land of Mitzrayim. <clears throat> yep, so let's see. The context here is the charmers, the magicians basically turn that stick. Yeah. Um, the, uh, let's see, it says, and the charmers the Egyptians also did likewise with their sorceries and brought up the frogs on the land of Egypt. So basically these sorcerers were trying to copy Yahuwah exactly. and, and trying to compete with Yahuwah. Like before that, they did the staff into snakes, but the staff that turned into a snake that Yahuwah did, and Yahuwah doesn't use magic. He can just, you know, he can form us out of dust. Just think about it. So... You know, that's not magic, so he can just do it because he's the creator. Right. Uh, understood is why they put curses on themselves by, by conjuring up frogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's what Brother Dennis just read was these charmers, these magicians were trying to mimic the father. And that's kind of Satan's MO. He can't do anything of himself. He's got to mimic whatever Yahuwah does. So, um, here we go. Let's see who's next here. We got Sister Shushana will be reading uh, Jeremiah 27, 9 to 10. Okay. Hold on. Yep. No problem. So do not listen to your prophets or to your diviners or to your dreamers, or to your observers of clouds, or your sorcerers who speak to you, saying, Do not serve the sovereign of Babel, for they are prophesying falsehood to you, to remove you far from your land, and I shall drive you out, and you shall perish. Says Yahuwah. Yep, so I just wanted to get it for uh, 
um, for anyone that wanted to test what the what the Septuagint says, um, what Shushan just read, Jeremiah twenty seven nine to ten, you can find in the Septuagint of that is chapter thirty four nine to ten. Just anyone that wanted to know. Um, so, and I think it's pretty much the same thing. It says, "Harking you not to your false prophets, nor to them that divine to you." nor them that foretell events or by dreams to you, nor to your auguries, nor your sorcerers that say you shall by no means work for the king of Babylon, for they prophesy lies to you to remove you far from your land. Yeah, so this, in context, this is when they wanted to not be under the siege of Nebuchadnezzar. Um and they they were rebelling against Yahuwah. Yahuwah told them they're like, you got you got an ultimatum. You either obey what I'm telling you to do, go under the king of Babylon that I'm sending you into captivity, or if you go back to Egypt on your own will, you're gonna die. So, and that's what they did. They rebelled against Yahuwah. They actually willfully went back to Egypt instead of being under Nebuchadnezzar. And you can read that, about. Jeremiah uh, uh, 44 26, where and that was also the reason that he took the name away from the Israel. Yeah, and uh, if what you really, chapter was that in the, in the Septuagint, Doug? Um, that was 34 9 to 10 instead of 27, so it's like 13 chapters off. Wow, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. So the numbering is like way off, uh, which pretty much is like a man-made tradition anyway, but it's just kind of interesting that chapters are that off. Um, yeah, if you want to know more context about it, I would recommend reading Ezekiel on this time period too. Um, Ezekiel 29 talks about that Pharaoh of that time who was hiding them, um, and he actually compares him to uh, the dragon. He actually says, uh, just like a really quick cross-reference here, he says, uh, Ezekiel 29 from the Septuagint says, In the twelfth year, in the tenth month of the first day of the month, the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him, against the whole of Egypt, and say, Thus says Yahuwah, Behold, I am against Pharaoh, the great dragon. <laughs> that lies in the midst of the water. So you see the principality that's behind uh, Nico here that says the rivers are mine and I made them. Yeah, I wonder who you who is referring to, the great dragon that claims to be the creator. Oh, yeah, that's that's hard to figure out there. So, yeah, the, the, the whole context is basically they fled to Egypt on their own. Yahuwah's angry at the Pharaoh for har basically harboring his people from him. And uh, Yahuwah goes against Egypt, you know, and executes his wrath against that Pharaoh at that time. Um, so it's kind of like a reverse dynamic from the Exodus. It's like they're willfully going into slavery in a way. They're like, they don't, they don't want to be under the king that Yahuwah chose for them. They'd rather be under a pagan king that they can get away with sin with. So, um, but yeah, so here we go. Um, Brother Dennis, if you could read um, 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 17. <laughs> and caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire and practiced divination and sorcery and sold themselves to do evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, to provoke Yahuwah. Yep. Again, Molech worship, again being referenced. So this is something that uh, the original Yashraelites had a problem with. They couldn't, uh, they started whoring after Molech and, uh, you know, Ishtar, you know, the, the Ashras, the, uh, 
the pillars that they were making were toured to uh, Molech's wife. That's also known as Artemis, Diana, so on and so forth. So this seemed to be the biggest problem. They're, one of the two biggest idols they had was Baal, Molech, Zeus, Jupiter, whatever you want to call them. And uh, in the Septuagint, it actually, I think it even calls him Baal. Let me see here. It says uh, in verse 16 here. They forsook the commandments of Yahuwah, their Elohim, and made themselves graven images. Even two heifers. Oh, oh boy. And, and served Baal. <laughs> and they worshipped all the army of heaven and served Baal. Wow, so the Septuagint's indicating they didn't just serve Baal, but they also served uh, all the stars. They worshipped the stars, the army of heaven. Great. So th this is something that we as human beings have had trouble with, is just serving Yahuwah and you him alone. And that's why Yahushua probably reiterated to Satan. He said, you shall worship Yahuwah and him alone you shall serve. When Satan was trying to get him to uh, worship him, when Satan was trying to get Yahushua to worship him, that was Yahushua's response. So that uh, seems Satan's mo is to get you to worship his his Malachim and uh, his his anointed one. So, brother Dennis, if you could possibly read Second Kings chapter nine, verse twenty-two. You're muted, brother. You're muted. There we go. All right. Second Kings 9, 22. And it came to be when Yehoram saw Yahu, that he said, Is there peace, Yahu? But he answered, What peace? As long as the whorings of your mother Isabel and her witchcraft are so many? <laughs> Does yours say witchcraft? Yes, witchcraft. Okay. I was just curious. Okay. And so, Isabel, Isabel is, is what uh, turned into Jezebel when they came up with the J. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been originally in the King James. Let me just check here. I got the 1611 here. Yeah. I E E Isabel. Yeah. So it went from I to J. Yeah. E Isabel. Um, and it would have been Isabel or Isabel, or however you pronounce it. Um, and which is kind of interesting because you got Bell in that name, like Baal, Bell, you know, Beltane and all that. Mm -hmm. People that have done research on that and how the Wiccans celebrate Beltane and all that. So, yeah, there's probably she was a worshiper of Bell or Baal. Uh, let's see right. here. See here, witchcraft so many. Yeah, she's the one that um, took that king of Yehuda. She married him and, you know, turned him against Yehuda. Ahab, yeah. Yeah. Yep, and she's also mentioned in uh, Revelations. Talks about she's going to be in a sick bed. I gave her time to repent, but uh, she did not. So I'll put her in a sick bed and all that. And Yep. She eventually, she eventually was... Uh... Uh, killed by dogs. Eaten by dogs. Mm. Wow. Yeah. All right. Sister Shushana, if you could possibly read um, Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 18. Okay. Hold on. I had already read that. Let me see. Okay, no, I didn't. I got it. And it came to be as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of Panthon did meet us, who brought her masters much profit by foretelling, having followed Shaul with us. And us, she cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High Yahuwah, 
who proclaimed to us the way of deliverance. And she was doing this for many days. But Shaul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Yahuwah, in, in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach, to come out of her. And it came out that same hour. So she had a definite spirit. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, couldn't read it right. Is it Panthon or Puthon? Uh, here. Um, yeah, I don't know why they changed that. They could have just got fortune telling. I don't know why they uh, think, I think the Hollywood <laughs> scriptures sometimes they go a little crazy with that. Um, yeah, they, they should have just kept it as what it was in English. Um, yeah, it says it came to be as from the ISR 1998, they even kept it in English. And it came to be as we went to prayer that certain slave girl possessed with a oh, Puthon. Okay, so yeah. it's a certain demonic spirit. Okay, it, must it is be, Puthon. I, I couldn't tell if it was a yeah. A or a <laughs> Yeah, because the Greek doesn't even have a, uh, a specific name for it. I wonder. Oh, I see what they did. They took the actual Greek name uh, of the spirit and they put it there instead of just divination. Okay, I mm -hmm. see what they did. Okay, that's kind of more accurate. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm guessing a specific type of demon, probably. A specific type of divination demon. Uh, see, fortune telling. So, again, the whole fortune telling thing. Um, and the most, I think it's supposed to be most high all right there. Yeah, that's the, uh, yeah, that's that's a title that sometimes is used for you, who uh, you'll see in the, um, book of daniel he's called the most high Elohim, uh, meaning he's the true one the highly exalted Elohim. he's the true deity uh, and so yeah so that's what shushana just read acts 16 16 to 18 and uh see here so let's we'll see who's got who's gonna read next oh shushana again okay ezekiel 21 21 to 27 Okay. Okay. Ezekiel twenty one. I got so many of them in here. There we are. For the sovereign of Babel shall stand at the parting of the way, at the fork of the two ways, to practice divination. He shall shake the arrows. He shall, he shall ask the household idols. He shall look at the liver in his right hand shall be the divination for Jerusalem to set up battering, battering rams, to call for murder, to lift the voice with shouting, to set haltering rams, battering rams, sorry, to set battering rams against the gates, to heap up a siege mound, to build a wall, and it shall be to them as a false divination in the eyes of those who have sworn oath to them. But he is bringing their crookedness to remembrance so that they are taken. Therefore, thus said Master Yahusha, because you have made your crookedness to be remembered in that your transgressions are uncovered so that your sins are seen in all your deeds, because you have been remembered, you are taken by hand. And to you, O profane, wrong one, leader of Yisrael, whose day has come in the time of the crookedness of the end, thus said the Master Yahuwah, remove the turban, it says turban, okay, Remove the turban and take off the crown. This shall not remain. 
exalt the humble and humble the exalted. Overthrown, overthrown, I make it overthrown. It shall be no longer until it comes to whom it rightly belongs and I shall give it. Wow. So this is another place in Ezekiel where Yahuwah's wrath is coming upon his own people for constantly keep sinning and sinning and sinning and not caring and they're they're causing him to even remember their sins, the Septuagint says. Um, so very, very bad. They're they're doing divination, witchcraft, and all types of sins, whoring after other mighty ones. And he's he's at the tipping point. He's at basically, you know, he's uh, his long suffering has ended because they keep on worshiping graven images and all this stuff, and they're they're not repenting. They their heart is obstinate. So this is another warning about uh, you know divination. How you who feels about it, um, and he hates it. So again, this goes back to our study and what our studies have been about. Um, exposing this works of darkness and not practicing them. Um, so Brother Dennis, if you could possibly read um, Exodus chapter 7, verse 11. Think. Exodus 7, verse 11. Okay. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the practicers of witchcraft, and they, the magicians of Mitzrayim, Egypt, also did so with their magic. Yeah, again, so now we're seeing even the origin of these occultic practices go, you know, back into pagan civilizations and go back to Egypt and, uh, you know, I mean, they go back further than that, as we've seen in the part one study. We've seen it goes back to the Watchers, you know, Genesis 6. That, that's where it actually originates. But as you can see here, Yahuwah's people were never meant to do these things. They were never uh, allowed to use sorcery and stuff like that. Um, children of Satan have always been doing these things, spiritually speaking, children of the devil. Um, these these heathen nations that serve the demons that serve uh, the watchers through graven images are doing these things because that's what the watchers taught them. That's what they uh, learned from these fallen angels. These type of practices. So, <clears throat> yep. So Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, called his wise men, so-called wise men, uh, and had them do charms and enchantments uh, to try to battle against Masha and uh, Masha's Alihim, the true Alihim. So Nahum, or Nahum, maybe it's supposed to be pronounced. So I'll be reading Nahum chapter 3, verse 4, which we kind of looked at earlier, but we'll, uh, we'll, I think I'll reread that verse just for anyone that came in recently into the study. So I'll just read that real quick. Okay, uh, Nahum chapter 3, verse 4 from the Septuagint says, Because of the abundance of fornication, she is a fair harlot and well-favored, skilled in sorcery that sells the nations by her fornication and peoples by her sorceries. And if you look into the Greek, that's where we get pharmakeia, the word being used for sorceries here. So it's talking about drug sorcery, not just regular sorcery, not just regular magic, but drug sorcery. Uh, you know, like I said before, the pharmaceutical industry. This is this is where the pharmacia comes from. That's why the symbol for uh, you know the medical symbol is the staff of Hermes. It's called the staff of Hermes, which we found out recently in our part one. Hermes is the same person as Thoth. And most likely, Thoth is the uh, Egyptian version of Azazel, Satan, Gabriel. So, goes all the way back to Satan. 
Um, so that was Nahum chapter 3, verse 4. And so now we're going to go back here, and I'm going to be also reading Isaiah chapter 47, 9 to 14. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so 47, 9 to 14. Okay, here we go. All right, so Isaiah 47, 9 to 14. But now these two things shall come upon you suddenly in one day, in one yom. The loss of children and widowhood shall come suddenly upon you for your sorcery and for the strength of your enchantments, for your trusting in wickedness. For you said, I am there is no, not another. Huh. Know you the understanding of these things and the harlotry shall be your shame. For you said in your heart, I am. Huh. And there's not another. Again, you know, the I am, there's probably significance to that there. Um, that's the spirit of Satan trying to claim to be Yahuwah. Uh, and destruction shall come upon you and you shall not be aware. There shall be a pit and you shall fall into it. And grief shall come upon you and you shall not be able to be clear. And destruction shall come suddenly upon you and you shall not know. Stand now with your enchantments and with the abundance of your sorcery, which you have learned from your youth, if you can be profited. You are wearied in your counsels. Let now the astrologers of the heaven and stand and deliver you. Let them that see the stars tell you what is about to come upon you. Behold, they all shall be burnt up as sticks in the fire. Neither shall they at all deliver their life from the flame. Because you have coals of fires, sit thou upon them. So basically, Yahuwah is saying, you're not going to be delivered from the flame, from the lake of fire. You, you let, Trust in your astrologers. Trust, trust in uh, the host of heaven that you worship to save you. Go ahead. That, that's what he's saying. He's derogatorily saying to the harlot, go ahead. Go, go ahead, use all your sorcery that you've been using to deceive the nations and see if that will deliver you out of my hand. So I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing right now, but that's the context of these verses that I just read here. So this is about the destruction of Babylon, if I'm not mistaken, this chapter. So, yeah, so very scary. This is a very scary thing right now. We should, uh, and that's another thing too, is we are to come out of Babylon. Part of coming out of Babylon is getting rid of their practices, including, uh, you know, telekinesis, all these wicked occult practices. So, Sister Shushana, if you could possibly read on Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 18, um, verse 20, and also verse 6. Okay. Um, 18 and 20 first, and then, then verse 6. Um, if, if it's, if it's better, you could read verse six and then 18 and 20. If... Okay. Verse six, their visions are false and their divinations a lie saying thus declares Yahuwah. When Yahuwah has not sent them yet, they expected the word to be confirmed. And then verse 18 and you shall say, this is what the Master Yahuwah said, Woe to the women sewing cushions for all joints of the hand, and to those making veils for the heads of people of every size, to hunt beings. You hunt the beings of my people, while you keep alive your own beings. And you have profaned me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to put to death beings that should not die and to keep alive beings who should not live by your lying to my people who listen to lies. And verse 20, therefore thus said the master Yahuwah, see I am against your cushions by which you hunt the beings like, they're like birds and I shall tear them from your arms and shall let the beings go 
the beings you hunt like birds, and I shall tear off your veils, and I shall deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall no longer be as prey to your hand, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah. Yeah. yeah. So for people that don't understand what uh, Shushan just read, the uh, pillows and stuff like that, or the cushions, I believe it's talking about what we know in modern day practice as um, voodoo mm -hmm. dolls. It's 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 like a witchcraft. They'll they'll make uh, they'll make these dolls where they put little needles in them, and they'll they'll, they'll put us. It's almost like they they're using almost like telekinesis or something that when they're killing the doll, they're killing the person. Like it's uh it's it's yeah. a evil occultic practice and it seems like yashar all unfortunately at that point in time adopted that from the heathen nations and they started or no maybe it wasn't yashar all, maybe i might be misreading this i think this is a, a heathen nation that's doing it to his people so um that's what it looks like to me yeah so it might be the egyptians doing this maybe Maybe the Egyptians are doing this to the righteous that are of Yashar all, and they're only saving alive the beings of the wicked of his people. And that's probably what's happening here. Uh, it's talking about um, you, you keep alive the beings that should not be kept alive, and you kill the ones that should not die. So, yeah. So that seems to what be happening. But you could, in modern day, it's called basically voodoo dolls. That, that's what it is. They're, that's uh, that's what it's talking about there. Um, but yeah, it's a very evil practice that um, people in Barbados and like other islands like that would probably practice. And it's very uh, it's an ancient form of like a cultic practice, uh, witchcraft. Um, let me see here. So let's go back to here and go to. I'm going to be. I think we did Isaiah 18, 8, 19 to 20 already. So let me get rid of that. We read that already. All right. Shushana, if you could read um, Jeremiah 14, 14. Okay. When Yahuwah said to me, the prophets prophesy falsehood in my name, I have not sent them nor commanded them nor spoken to them. They are prophesying to you a false vision, worthless divination, and the deceit of their own hearts. You want me to read the next one? Yeah, go ahead. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah, concerning the prophets who prophesy in my name, whom I did not send, and who say sword and scarcity of food shall not be in this land, by sword and scarcity of food, these prophets shall be consumed. And, and the people to whom they are prophesying shall be thrown out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the scarcity of food and the sword with no one to bury them. Them, nor their wives, nor sons, nor their daughters for I shall pour their evil on them so that's what Yahuwah will do if you think you're coming in his name and you prophesy falsely you better be sure you have a sure word from Yahuwah if you yeah. say anything yeah, and a lot of the times I used to hear, and I know they still do it in, in the church, they do the, uh, you know, uh, as the Lord, you know, as the Lord lives, or the Lord has given me a word, and so they, they, they need to be more careful, especially these preachers, they need to be careful that the Father's telling them to say something rather than they, they uh, lying to their congregation that the Father gave them a prophecy. Yeah. So, because I've seen it, I've seen videos of it, I've seen them say it themselves, you know, the, the Lord has given me a word today to share to you, and, you know, it's almost like they're claiming to be a prophecy and stuff like that, or, 
There's um, there's even, I think it's Jeremiah 23 or something where it talks about um, these false prophets said, I have a dream, I have a dream. It's kind of interesting because that's what Martin Luther King <laughs> would always yeah. start his, his speeches off of, I have a dream, I have a dream, and yada, yada. So it's kind of interesting. Um, Brother Tobiah, oh, wait a minute. I think we read, yeah, we read Exodus 722. What is going on here? I got like duplicates. This is ridiculous. All right. Um, Sister Shoshana, can you read um, Daniel chapter 2, verse 27? Okay. Hold on. Okay. Got 27 to 29. And I'm going to get my reading glasses because I've had trouble seeing Whenever I highlight in blue, it's just so dark. Mm. Wow. Daniel answered before the sovereign and said, The secret which the sovereign is asking, the wise ones, the astrologers, the magicians, and the diviners are unable to show it to the sovereign. But there is an Allah in the heavens who reveals secrets and he has made known to sovereign Nebuchadnezzar what is to be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed are these. As for you, O sovereign, on your bed, your thoughts came up. What is going to take place after this? And he who reveals secrets has made known to you what shall be after this. Mm. Uh, I like how the Septuagint says what must come to pass, which kind of blends a lot with the New Testament where Yahushua says that the scripture be fulfilled. So it's like it has to come to pass. Um, and uh, there's just little differences I saw here where it says, um, let's see, in the last days rather than just the latter days. Kind of gives more of um uh, idea that this is like specifically for the end times the generation we're living in now um so it's kind of interesting but yeah the the gist of it is that these astrologers could not give him the they could not answer his dreams they they couldn't even give him an interpretation of it until he tells them the dream and only daniel could because yahua gave him the answer and uh nebuchadnezzar realizes that and so, yeah, and that's another thing too. They try, Satan always tries to do a cheap copycat of what Yahuwah can do. Um, see here, brother to yeah, brother Tobiah, if you could possibly read um, Zechariah chapter ten, verse two. Okay, Zechariah 10 2. Give me just a second here. Mm. All right. For the household idols spoke emptiness, the diviners saw falsehood and related dreams of deceit. They comfort in vain. Therefore, they have wandered about like sheep. They are afflicted, for there is no shepherd. Um, wow. Got diviners. They can't see true visions. Uh, see here. There was no healing, no making whole by them. Um, so as you can see here, what Brother Tobiah just read here in Zechariah 10 too, these uh, diviners, they can't see true visions. Like the Father gives to his prophets true prophecies, true visions. And these uh, false prophets, these diviners, they can't get a true vision. And in his version, that was because there was no shepherd. Mm, interesting. Not, no healing. That's interesting, the translations. Yeah, the Septuagint has healing for some reason. I'm guessing they just took a more literal thing to it. And yeah, they probably took a more literal approach to translating it from the Hebrew 
into Greek, they probably could it could be the it could just be they mistranslated it possibly into the English. Um, it says, uh, Ezekiel thirty four five, and it says, um, um, and they were scattered because there were no, no shepherd, and they became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. Mm -hmm. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill, and my sheep were scattered all over the face of the earth. No one was seeking or searching for them. Anyway, it references Ezekiel 34, verse 5, and regard to that, uh, there being no, no shepherd. Yeah, I think that's an error by Brenton there, because he actually has shepherds in that verse. So it seems more or uh, less translator error. Probably, probably he translated the Greek wrong or something into English. Because um, he does have shepherds in Ezekiel 34, 5. So that's the same with the Masoretic there. Um, so, yeah, it's probably just a translator error, which happens from time to time, especially with uh, we don't have originals of these manuscripts. So sometimes these translators, they, uh, they get second-handed information sometimes. So that happens. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I'll be reading Ephesians 6.12, which uh, is loosely associated with this study, but uh, pretty much gives you an idea where all these practices come from, in a way. You can understand that we're not fighting with one another. We're fighting with these principalities, these powers, these fallen angels that have taught men this stuff, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, which is talking about heavenly beings. If you look at the word prince sometimes in Scripture, it's not talking about a human prince sometimes. It's actually talking about an angel um, and talking about someone that's over a kingdom. That's why Deuteronomy 32.8 talks about after the Tower of Babel, Yahuwah gave um, the nations into the fallen angels. Um, so sometimes when you see prince in the book of Daniel, like the prince of Persia, it's not talking about a human prince. Uh, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. So high places would be kingdoms, heavenlies, you know, the sky. And we know that uh, Satan himself is the principality of the air prince of the power there so he you know the airwaves hence why everything on the radio is disgusting yeah <laughs> almost every almost every song on the radio may you know is disgusting to us that are in the truth we can't stand so it makes sense uh but yeah so that was this ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 i just read and uh next will be let's see here um, Daniel chapter 4, verse 7, Shushana will be reading as we continue here. All right, I've got Dan Daniel 4, verses 7 and 8. Okay. So the magicians, the astrologers, the Kazdim, and the diviners came in, and I related the dream to them but its interpretation they did not make known to me. And at last, Daniel, whose name is Belteshazzar, according to the name of my Allah, came before me. In him is the spirit of the set-apart Allahim. So I related the dream to him. I could read on, but you know the dream. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, no, I was just looking at the difference here. So um, where does it say the set? Oh, okay. Wow, okay. That's interesting. I never noticed that he mentions the set-apart spirit here in verse 6. I guess I always went past that. I never realized that. Whom I know that the set-apart spirit of Elohim is in. Wow, that, that's interesting. I, uh, mm -hmm. Wow. And this is Belshazzar, who uh, is not a believer at that point. He's, um, 
Uh, oh, no, no, that's right. Daniel was called Belshazzar by um, Nebuchadnezzar. I always get confused when it's talking about Daniel being called Belshazzar and when it's actually the person, Belshazzar, that's the son of Nebuchadnezzar. I always get confused. Okay, so yeah, th he's calling him Belshazzar. Nebuchadnezzar is calling him Belshazzar, which uh, kind of funnily is also a name for his son later on. Um, see, Daniel chapter 1, verse 20. I think you also have. I do, yeah. yeah. After that, can we take a short break, or can I? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can pause uh, and take a short break, yeah. Daniel 1, verse 20. Okay. And in my word of wisdom and understanding, about which the sovereign examin examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians, the astrologers, who were in all his reign. Mm. Wow. All right. So right now, all of our viewers, listeners, brothers and sisters that have been on Facebook Live watching us, thank you for tuning in. Um, please stay with us. I'll be just pausing our study. Um, we're going to take a very short intermission. We'll be right back. We're almost done with the study. So please just stay with us if you can. If, if you have to go, we understand. But um, please stay tuned if you're enjoying this study. We will be finishing it soon. Um, so I'm going to pause the recording. We'll, we, we will be continuing this study very shortly, very briefly. <laughs> 